Hey everybody, welcome to our newest video on this master closet renovation. So this was just a standard square closet with a single wire shelf and we turned it into this beautiful custom built-in closet for all of my wife's clothes. I'm not allowed in here anymore. This is the last time I'm allowed to come in, but I wanna show you how I did it, including this custom dresser, custom cubbies, hanging closet storage, and all the other accent features in here. Let's dive into how we did it and how you can do it yourself too. All right, so we started this project by demoing the old closet. We just had one single wire builder grade shelf in there. These are easy to take out, and man, we are almost done with removing all the wire shelving in our house. Since this is a true built-in piece, we had to remove the baseboards and quarter round. We got a brand new trim puller for this. It really made it a lot easier and didn't damage the walls. Now that the space was ready to work in, we started by cutting down the boards needed for our 2x4 base. Again, this is a built-in and we wanted it to look raised and truly finished, so we put a 2x4 base in the bottom. We drew pocket holes in each of the pieces to create this. This is an L shape. We decided to go on two sides of our closet. Then we put everything together with the brand new Craig 90 degree pocket hole driver. This was a really useful tool for this project, especially in these bases where we did not have enough room to get a drill fully behind to drive a pocket hole screw. Once the bases were built, we slid them into place and then attached them to each other and to the studs in the wall using screws. All right, so now our surface was ready. Now it was time to paint the walls. We continued the same color from our bathroom that we just did, which was Bear Riverdale. This is a nice light green color that matches with the color scheme in the rest of our house. Now we had a totally blank slate and it was time to build. We started by building the hanging clothes storage on the left hand side of the closet. To do this, we used all plywood and drilled pocket hole screws in each. We built a box frame by putting a piece of plywood down on top of the 2x4, putting plywood on each end, adding a top, and then adding a divider in the middle. We offset the divider so we could have different sections for my wife's clothes. We started out by putting an upper shelf up here. To be honest, we actually ended up taking this down. I don't have video of that. We took that down and moved it to the center and had just two rods instead of two rods and two shelves. We didn't have enough clearance for all the clothes, so we made it work that way. You'll see it in the end. Then we ripped down all of the boards for the main part of this build. So the main part of this build is the built-in dresser with overhead cubby storage. We used our Craig Pocket Hole Jig 720 to make all of the pocket holes quickly and easily. You can see our full review on that right there on the screen. Once all the plywood was cut and pocket holes were drilled, we started assembly of that dresser base. That included just attaching sides and a center divider of plywood to another plywood base. And then we cut a butcher block top to go on top of it. All right, now we gotta build those drawer boxes. This is always a fun project. There's lots of ways to build drawer boxes. For this, because this was such a massive project, we decided to go the quick and easy route, which was just glue and brad nails through the sides. We used 90 degree corner clamps to do that. Then we added a bead of glue along the bottom and a piece of quarter inch plywood on top nailed in. If you're concerned about the structural integrity of these dressers, just remember that this base is glued and nailed in and it holds everything completely together. Then we took the pieces that we cut for our drawer fronts and ran them through the Craig Precision Tabletop Router. This is an awesome tool. I have really enjoyed it. It definitely saved probably an hour of hand routing just by running everything through there. Next up on assembly was the overhead cubby storage. This looks a little bit different now that it's on the side on the ground, but basically we created a box frame that was going to sit on top of the butcher block top that is the same size as the dresser below and then added cubbies. For this, we used the actual pieces of cubby as spacers and drilled in inner sides so they'd be the perfect, perfect dimensions for what we needed. Now that everything has been cut, sanded, and drilled, it was time to finish it up. We used a butcher block oil on top of the butcher block top and used a whitewash stain on all the other pieces. This took a long time. I've always debated whether or not it's easier to stain individual pieces and then assemble them or assemble them and then stain them. 
All right, so drawer slides always mess me up. I'm always terrified whenever I have to do a piece of furniture that has a drawer slide because I'm always just so worried that everything's not gonna line up. Uh, the easiest thing I have found to install drawer slides the best possible way is to figure out how much space you need in between each one, get a spacer, put it in there, and attach your drawer slides all the way up in a row, attach them in the same place on the actual drawers themselves, and just work your way up. Here's what I mean. As you can see, we have a scrap piece of wood that is the spacer. So we put that on top of a drawer slide that was in below it and used a, another drawer slide on top of it. This was easy to do because we put the first drawer slide all the way at the bottom and then use the spacer going up. With this spacer, it definitely gave the slide a place to sit on so that it was easier to screw it in. But honestly, you might be better off using Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That's method, which is to turn a dresser on its side and then assemble everything so you're not working against gravity. In the end, my method worked fine, and then it was time to attach the drawer slide part to the side of all the drawers. This is a 10 drawer dresser, so this did take a little while, but it wasn't too bad. With the slides in place, we attached the drawer fronts just using nails. I didn't use glue or anything else because we're going to be screwing them in and using the handles in just a second. All right, so now I've got all the drawer slides in place. So now it's time to finish up the actual drawers. I put the drawer slides on the side of these. I put the faces on. And now all I have left is to put on the hardware. So what I did was I made a little jig that I measured out to the inside. I put holes that are exactly the size of our hardware. What I do is I slide this in here, drill from the back, and then attach the hardware, no problem. Let's show you how to do it. All right, so that jig just slid in like I showed you, clamped in place, and then we drilled the two holes through. Then we pushed the machine screws through the wood and attached the handle on the outside. Like I said, this holds the drawer front in fully securely using the screws and the handle as leverage. The drawer boxes all looked great, so we moved it up into the closet and set the butcher block top on top of it. All right, so this is the true moment of truth. You do the whole thing, you get the whole project built, it looks good on a computer, but now will the drawers fit in right? Did I put the slides in the right spot? Let's hope that we got everything spaced out. Let's slide them in and see what happens. All right, so everything overall worked out really great. The only one I had trouble with was this small shelf that goes in right here. And so what I think is that this was just a little bit too tight. I actually looked at it over here and it looks like the top is a little further in than on the bottom of this side piece. So all I'm gonna do is let those pocket screws out and push it back just a hair and screw them back in, slide this in and it should be no problem. All right, so I loosened up those pocket screws and let's slide these back in, fingers crossed. So you'll see that it did work. All we had to do was bump that side out just a little bit and it gave us enough wiggle room to slide in the drawers. These slid in perfectly. Drawers can require a little bit of effort when you first push them in just to knock them into place. But once they're in, they should slide smooth and easy. All good. All right, ignore that hole in the dresser that's still sitting there. That drawer handle broke when I was attaching it and it took me a day or two to get to the store to buy a new one. We lifted up the cubby storage on top. This was quite the effort to get it in place, but once it was in place, we used pocket hole screws to attach it in. Again, I used the 90 degree pocket hole driver. This was perfect because this was a tight space. The 90 degree driver helped me to be able to reach in there and drive those pocket hole screws right into the butcher block top to hold the cubby in place. We also attached the cubby to the wall so it is perfectly secure. All right, so here's how it looked before we started putting stuff in, and here's how it looked after. Wow, this was such a transformation in this closet. The space seems huge now, and it holds so much more stuff. My wife is so pleased with everything and how it turned out. There's so many drawers. She can put all of her clothes in, and her makeup, and her jewelry. Everything slides in and out nicely. She can display her bags and shoes the way she wants on the cubbies, and there's plenty of space for mirrors and getting dressed and it all just came together really nicely. We love the glam touches including this beautiful light fixture. 
sprays out little floral patterns on the ceiling and walls. Overall, it's great. Again, if you want to get the free plans for this, you can check out our website, charlesmcgrafter.com, at the link below.